Linwood Barclay, American born, moved to Canada when he was four years old. He's actually one of my very favorite authors. I love reading his work. A lot of people don't know that he is also a petrol head and he has a train set to die for. And we're going to interview him right now. Read. If you're going to write, you have to be reading. I think, well, I have a couple of favorites. Certainly No Time for Goodbye is a favorite because it was the book that was the most successful and it broke me out. And, and so I have, I'm grateful for that book and, the, and particularly the way it was embraced in the UK. But I think the book that I really kind of personally love the most is Trust Your Eyes, which I think may be the best concept uh, for a book that I ever had. And it has this, this strong relationship between two brothers. And this, that book, I think, may just be my favorite. I do, I do my writing in a, in, uh, in a study at home. Uh, we have a, another place now which also has a study, so that's where I work. I know a lot of authors, when they travel, they work when they're on the road. I don't. I want to be in that spot where I do all my work, in, in that study. And, and uh, it, that's the one place that really works for me. I think the, the book that may have made the biggest impression on me, one of the biggest, was when I was 15 years old, on the uh, little spindling metal paperback rack at our local grocery store, they had a copy of the Goodbye Look, a paperback edition of Ross MacDonald's Lou Archer novel. And I hadn't read him before, but there was a blurb at the top that said, the finest series of novels, uh, ever written, detective novels ever written by an American. And it was a blurb from the screenwriter, William Goldman. And I read that book, and, and there was something about it. This was a guy who was taking the detective novel and doing more with it. He was using it for social commentary and talking about family dysfunction. And something about that book really spoke to me and it made a difference for me. Well, one thing I, I, I'll, I'll admit to is uh, every once in a while if I'm flipping the dial on, you know, going through all the channels and surfing about, and if I land on this one particular movie, I, there's something about it I just have to stop and I watch it. And the movie is Notting Hill with Hugh Grant and Julia Roberts, and it's schmaltzy, and it's corny, and there's something about it, and I, I kind of really love this movie, and I'm deeply, deeply ashamed by this. And the fact that I would even tell you is, is I, I can't even believe I'm admitting it. I'm not, I'm not big on rituals. Um, I just head up to the office with a cup of coffee. I usually maybe do a couple of emails if they're sitting there. I have more of a ritual when I finish a book. And that's when I, when I finish a first draft or a second or whenever I'm finished a major part of the process, I clean up the desk. The top of the desk becomes absolutely spotless. There's no bits of notes. There's no pens. There's not, the desk is just, you could perform surgery on it. And, and to me, that's a, uh, that's a sign I'm done, at least for now. I started writing stories when I was in about grade three. I, was, I must have been like eight, I don't know what it was, eight years old or something like that. And, I, that's, and I've been writing stories ever since. I think it's the one thing I always knew that I wanted to do. When I was in my early teens, mid-teens, I thought what I wanted to, to be was uh, a TV screenwriter. That was my dream. I wanted to be writing episodes of Mannix and Hawaii Five O and all that Mission Impossible. And a little later on, I thought, no, what I want to do is novel. So I always wanted to do it, but it just took a long time for it to happen. I need, before I start a book, I need what I would call a hook. I need an event, a what if. What if a girl woke up and, and, the, and her entire family was gone? Or well, you know, what if you went to a theme park and your, your son disappeared, but you found him, but then your wife went missing? I need, I need a what if. And once I have a strong sort of hook like that, I start thinking about, well, what set of circumstances brought about that situation? And once I have that, then I can start planning sort of the big picture of a book. I can't plan at all, but once I have that hook, when I have a rough idea of what happened, and when I know my end point, I can start working. Well, I used to say that the one question I hated being asked was, where do you get your ideas? But I, but I stopped being kind of cranky about that one, because I think the, and it's generally asked by people who don't write. And I, and I think it's for them a legitimate question, because I would have the same question for, 
You know, Paul McCartney, where does the song come from? You know, go to Gershwin, where, where, if you could ask him, where did that, where did that, where did Rhapsody Blue come from? And so I'm as in awe of them as, as some people may be of authors, like where do, the, where do the ideas come from? The reason the question is tricky is because most of the time we often just don't know. It's just there. So Linwood is one of my favorite authors. Um, I'd love to know in the comment box below, who is yours?